Thank you. Uh, well, welcome everyone. I um, look forward to walking you through some of the best practices in selecting CMS. And uh, as part of the conversation today, we will talk about quite a few things in terms of what it takes to select the CMS and process and so on. And um, so let's get started. Uh, just a quick introduction to eDynamic. We're a uh, digital marketing and technology agency. We work with numerous and several verticals, including uh, financial services, technology, legal, manufacturing, and so on. And we're spread in, um, in four countries now, actually. <clears throat> and um, digital platform selection or CMS selection is a key capability that we offer. Everything that we do is towards empowering the marketer. So that's just a quick introduction to to eDynamics. So let's let's start by talking a little bit about some of the trends that we're seeing in the CMS space. What we're really seeing is that the term web content management really needs a rethink. Uh, it is not just about content management. It's about experience management. It's about how do marketers manage the web experience. It's about how you get you know the word web in itself is an issue now, right? Because it's multi-device, and you've got mobile, web, and, and other devices that you have to actually push content out to. And it needs to be multi-channel, so you need to even push content to various channels. So, so it's not just web content management. And what we're also seeing is that it's not just you know it's not just about content; it's about marketing automation as well. So. So when you start to think about web content management, the first thing that I typically recommend to our customers is don't just think about content management. It's a, it's a whole digital ecosystem that you're really going to be uh, looking at. It's, and, and it's just not features of a CMS that you'll be going after. Some of the emerging trends that we're seeing is that on one hand, you have the all-in-one CMSs, some of the large ones out there. They're the best of breed. And we're seeing a lot of consolidation. So we're seeing someone like a Sitecore, if you're familiar with that CMS, going down the approach and building all the capabilities within their CMS. We're seeing the likes of um, Ektron take a different route, which is really best of breed. Their product fits into an ecosystem. And consolidation of how um, you're seeing the likes of Adobe acquire products, so how they're integrating CQ5 with Omniture, and they're really pushing more towards a digital marketing suite than a CMS. So, so these are some of the trends that we're seeing in terms of consolidation and how various vendors are approaching the marketplace. And that's an important consideration for you as you think about your CMS. Um, <clears throat> the marketing capabilities that you would typically find in enterprise CMSs or perhaps marketing automation tools by themselves now are commoditized. So testing, personalization, analytics are capabilities that even lower mid-market CMSs are offering right out of the box. So again, not just about content, but there's a variety of other capabilities that you need to consider. Um, and this is just a general trend that we're seeing in the marketplace. Um, what's happened over the last few years is that there's just thousands of CMSs available, literally thousands of CMSs out there in the marketplace. Um, however, they're all you know across the spectrum, and we're certainly seeing that um, a small percentage of CMSs though are getting a large percentage. It's not even a 2080 rule. I would say it's almost 1090. Um, in terms of at least what we see in the in the marketplace, in terms of ten percent of the CMSs are doing ninety percent of the business. So, so those are some of the so some of the trends that we're seeing in the marketplace, and and you know the key takeaway there was how you really think about your content management system is really going to impact how you select the CMS. So it's not just content management; it's it's a variety of capabilities, including content management, multi-device experience. Uh, experience management, um, marketing capabilities, etc. So think about that ecosystem as you as you think about uh, selecting a CMS. And we're going to talk a little bit about that further. But at this point, what I'd like to do is run a bit, run a quick poll um, that the organizer is going to set up, and 
Um, I'd love to see your response to the poll. <clears throat> so if you see the poll pop up, um, just respond to it and I'd love to get a perspective as to where you see some of your concerns. <clears throat> Wow, this is heavily trending. A little surprised, but it's interesting. I'll just give it 10 more seconds, and then we can get going. Great. So the results are in. It seems that most of you find it difficult to really select the CMS because with too many products to choose from. I'm not surprised. I typically find that the gap between IT and marketing is, is almost those of you who are actually going through this. Um, you know, quite often IT is leading these projects and marketing is supporting them. And there's a bit of you know, marketing and ultimately using these tools. I see a lot of friction there, but this is interesting and it and it's it's accurate. There's just so many tools out there, and the other issue is many of them look alike. <laughs> so. You know, they, they do the same thing slightly differently. So, so interestingly, um, that, that, that is something that quite a few clients do bring up, and certainly gap between marketing and IT is something that they also bring up. And these are things we're going to talk about today. Hopefully you'll get some answers as part of this discussion today. All right, so let's talk about some of the considerations um, when you think about selecting a CMS. Let's start with product strategy and roadmap. So, so if you want to really not get into this endless cycle of looking at various CMSs and um, really getting, you know, looking at you know, feature comparison right off the start, if you start going down that path, you'll just have way too many options and it just becomes very difficult to select the appropriate product. So one of the things that we recommend is that you try to understand from the vendors what is their product strategy. So what are they trying to accomplish and how do they differentiate themselves? You'll find that vendors look, they have a philosophy and that philosophy might, you know, it might work well for you. For example, there's a, there's a partner that we work with, Ektron, they have a best to breed approach to their product if they say that it integrates well with other best of breed products in the ecosystem. So if you have other products in the ecosystem, within your uh, digital marketing ecosystem, then perhaps you can go down that route. But that philosophy might make well, work well for you. The other philosophy is, you know, integrate best of breed capabilities into the CMS and you know, product like Sitecore as an example. Go down that goes down that path, and and that works well because. You know, you get everything in, in under in one under one hood, and they're able to leverage capabilities very quickly. And you know, time to value is perhaps better in some cases. So, so understanding how products approach the marketplace, um, what their strategy is, is quite important. Um, and really understanding how that <clears throat> how that that product uh, actually executes against. Um, some of your needs. So some organizations have very heavy tech needs, and you know they have high level of integration of the back end. So you'll find products in the marketplace which are more development focused, or more platform. Others are easier to use for marketers, um, and those are the areas where you have to really understand your own needs and start to see products which fit better for you. And then there will be other consideration if you want to go down the SaaS route or stand stand alone. And there are pros and cons going going down both uh, either route. SaaS perhaps will have less flexibility, but you know, costs are better and time to market considerations will be there. So, so these are some of the things from a product strategy and roadmap that you have to consider as you start to even think about your products. So instead of getting into features right, right off the bat, really think about what is the strategy of the vendor. All vendors, well, you'd hope, have a strong strategy, and if they don't, then you know, you may want to even avoid that vendor. Um, so the other key key aspect to really think about is, you know, what are you selecting? And quite often, it is more than meets the eye. And once you get started, you start to realize that you went into the project looking for a CMS, but you know, if you're building a website, you need 
search. You need perhaps digital asset management. You need a community site. So, so are you really selecting a CMS or is it an ecosystem? Is it a digital platform? I think really understanding what your needs are um, functionally, you know, you need to manage content, you need to be able to search, you need to, perhaps you have large digital assets, uh, you need to build a community. So once you do that, then you can start to think about what kind of an ecosystem you need. And, and if you go down the path, for example, of picking a CMS, you might find it, you might just struggle because you may not get all the capabilities in one CMS. So you may actually have to pick a basket option solution where you're picking a CMS with a search capability, with communities, and it could be different products, but they coexist and they integrate well together. So certainly thinking about the platform and the ecosystem, where the CMS plays and, and mapping those to your needs is going to be, it is typically quite important because what we also find is many CMSs, um, most CMSs will not address all your needs. Certainly thinking about that digital ecosystem is quite important. And I talked about this basket of options where <laughs> once you start to understand um, the various capabilities that you need, you may think about a combination between a CMS, search, digital asset management. Again, this is all driven by your needs. So understanding your needs first and thinking about that ecosystem and then thinking about, well, who, what product offers 70% you know, of what we're looking for and what is that other 30% that they don't offer that we need to go, you know, start to look at. So, so when you think about this ecosystem, I, I did mention that a single technology rarely um, would meet needs across your spectrum of needs. So, in some cases, if you have simple needs, perhaps, but what we find is that around the CMS, you need to have other considerations around how you store your digital assets, marketing automation. So, it's one of the things I talked about earlier. And when you think about your ecosystem and the capabilities that you need, your, your CMS selection project might end up being a platform selection project. And I would say that in, in quite a few scenarios, that transition happens quickly as organizations really start to understand that these CMSs, a CMS does not meet all needs. And it can be frustrating to begin with, but, but over time, uh, as you start to understand this, I think you're better placed. So you also have to understand where these CMSs are positioned. So are they enterprise, mid-market? Um, there are CMSs which are more industry pros and cons to those, um, and then so on. So, so one of the things that um, one of the things that you may want to consider is the budget that you have and what type of a CMS um, that you're looking for. So you know, enterprise could be quarter million plus. Um, you know, mid-market could be anywhere from 50,000 to um, quarter million in terms of licensing fees annual for the first year and, and a certain percentage, 20% or so moving forward. So if you're focused on mid-market CMS, then, then you should really look at mid-market options and ensure that those products fit your budget. So you'll find a variety all the way from $5,000 or even free, obviously, with open source. Uh, all the way, you know, you could end up spending a million dollars on your CMS. So, so very quickly understanding where the CMS is positioned and if it fits your needs, and are your needs so business specific that you need an industry specific CMS? I would say 99% of the scenarios that's not the case. Um, contemporary CMS is out there. You know, you're building a website quite often. Contemporary CMSs give you what you need because those have best of breed marketing capabilities, which are more important quite often than industry specific capabilities that you can even build on top of the CMS. Um, and, and as you think about the product, think about your needs in terms of what, what assets are you building? Are you building a corporate website? Is it for multi channel publishing? Um, are you trying to build a community with the CMS? So the, the capability that you're trying to drive will drive the type of CMS you will need because some CMSs are better for corporate websites, the others you know, have better community capabilities. You may end up with a community uh, product rather than even a CMS if you go down that path. So understanding what your needs are and really then thinking about the CMS is quite important. And when you, when you think about technology, there's, there's a variety of options. 
quite often when we're starting out a selection process for clients, we ask our clients whether they prefer .NET, open source, Java, are there any considerations because very quickly you can come down to a set of options. So from the thousands of CMS, you can come down to you know a handful which are focused more towards the technologies that you have. But sometimes you know, you're know you open to various technologies and that's fine. So, so one of the big questions I keep getting asked is, you know, to go open source or not. And the first thing I tell our, our clients is that, you know, open source, there's some great technologies out there. But what really, if you're going down the open source route, you need to become a strong technology shop. So if you're implementing the CMS or if you have a partner, you need strong, very strong technical capabilities because there's just so much more you can do with open source technology uh, than rather than proprietary CMS. How are you going to get support? What is the total cost of ownership? So open source out of the box may seem inexpensive, but then there's a total cost of ownership that needs to be applied and, and really you need to think about what does it cost to build and maintain it because you may need more resources to maintain the site rather than, than in, a, in a contemporary situation. Um, the great thing about open source is you get a lot of ready to go features and they just keep coming. So if you're big uh, an open source product, one of the key things that you have to consider is how big is the community? How big is the community around a product? And how many capabilities are being built around that, that product? So something like a Drupal, for example, has a great community and a lot of features. So you need to think about those. You need to really think about that. Roadmap is something you have to be concerned about because a lot of CMSs, you know, they, they end up taking a variety of directions <laughs> depending on where the community decides to take the CMS. And, and that, that can be frustrating at times in terms of what you're looking for the CMS to do for you and what an open source CMS really can offer. Um, and in some cases, we've seen that you know, there are CMSs that become very popular and, and it, within no time, they, 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 they are not, you know, they, they slide off and you don't hear about them. You know, Typo3 is a CMS which was popular a few years ago and you don't hear about it as much as Drupal now. So you need to understand how, how powerful the CMS is, how strong does it look, you know, if you're making a three to five year investment, will this product be around? And how easy is it to use? So a key consideration of CMS is the end user adoption. How easily can your users go into the CMS and actually use it and, and quite a few of the open source CMSs are maybe not as easy to use and need more training. Um, <clears throat> so, so those are some of the things that you need to consider um, as you think about open source or not. And as you think about the overall technology, um, there are a variety of things that you have to think about when you're picking a CMS. So one of the things you have to think about is how how, what is the delivery architecture of the CMS? So does it render the page in real time? Uh, or does it push content to a web server and that, that's consumed on, onto the web? So there are different ways content can be delivered and that delivery architecture quite often has to be understood. So publishers perhaps, um, some, some publishers prefer going down the route of having a separate instance within their delivery architecture and you know they can produce content and HTML pages are put on the web page, web server and it's a lot faster to access it whereas in other scenarios um, the single instance is just a you know it's an easy way to um, uh, build sites on on onto CMS and it's a simple architecture how, how easy is it to integrate and develop on top of the CMS the reality is what you get out of the box will be you know 40 50 percent of the way you you really, you're, you know, of the way there. So you really have to use the CMS to build your site on top, the templates, you know, whatever terminology that particular CMS uses. So how easy will it be to integrate, build new technology, but integrate you know, things such as CRM, e-commerce? And so, so CMS may have great features, but if it does not integrate well with your capabilities that you need, you will have issues. Um, page rendering, how are pages rendered? Security of how users can access the CMS, how it manages permissions, and so on. How easy is it to upgrade? So uh, around upgrades, not just the ease of upgrade, to be honest, is how often do the upgrades come? So there are CMSs which are quite popular, and you know, they, their roadmaps weren't that strong, though, 
and the upgrades rarely came. In some cases, the upgrades are way too frequent because it's a poorly constructed CMS. So you have to think about what does it mean um, and how, what is the history of, of upgrades. Our performance, um, again, variety of architectures will really help you think about what kind of performance. So two examples that I gave, are the you know separate versus integrated will have various performance implications. The other key key aspect in when you're thinking about your CMS is the content production process. So so how is content produced, how is it managed, and then how is it truly consumed? So when you think about your life cycle, and, and different organizations have various variety of life cycles in terms of might be just one person entering content, might be a whole organization in terms of publishers, you know, they may not be your, even your employees. Content might be coming from a variety of places. So really thinking about how is content produced, how is content created, what type of content, what format will be a consideration in the type of CMS at the set. And are they are the are the features easy to use? Are they, you know, in some cases you need just very simple, easy to use features like inline editors and so on. Uh, workflow is, you know, how flexible is the workflow? And from a deployment perspective, again, how easy is it to deploy the content and how how the content makes its way to production. So really thinking about how content is produced um, is important. The other is how is the content managed? How is it stored in the CMS? What's the taxonomy? How is it structured? How do you get access to it? How is it indexed? What is version control like? So again, not just about features, it's about this whole content life cycle that exists around the CMS that needs to be looked at. So don't just look at features in terms of how you edit content and, and so on. Really think about what is the life cycle that you have, you potentially have, and what CMS would fit that life cycle. And how is that content ultimately delivered? So are you delivering just to the website? Are you delivering to devices? Are you delivering perhaps to other sites? So really thinking about how that content is ultimately delivered um, is quite important. Internationalization. So some CMSs are better at providing multilingual capabilities. Um, analytics and testing tools. So the ability to test the experience, to make changes, to some CMSs that provide those out of the box. So anything about the content life cycle is, is going to go a long way in finding something that's a really good fit for you. One of the other capabilities that we're seeing CMSs offer now is the whole notion of marketing automation and analytics. And the word marketing automation gets used in a variety of of okay, so so I, I broke that down. It's it's web personalization, it's analytics, it's lead management, and just automation of marketing capabilities. And these are now offered within the CMS. So if you want to personalize the experience to a particular user type, that is now out of the box. If you want to get analytics, quite often that is also out of the box. But you may have, have an existing analytics tool that perhaps you know does a better job than the web content management tools analytics capabilities. So, but marketing automation is something that should be a consideration because ultimately what marketers want to do is to have levers to make changes to the experience to ultimately accomplish their goals. The one, one area which can be a banana skin of implementation is content migration. And you know, it's surprising how little focus this is given when you're selecting your CMS. It's typically an afterthought. And, and really a, a really good migration strategy and really understanding your CMS and the, the source CMS and how the content moves over um, could have an a huge impact as to how you how successful you are. There are tools out there which which allow you to migrate content, but even as you're selecting a CMS, you need really, really need to think about how existing content will make it to the source, from the source to the target system, and which is the ideal system for you to fit that content in. So the content structure is not favorable for your type of content, you have an issue. Really thinking about how the content will move will actually drive your decision of actually picking a CMS. So the other thing you have to consider is, you know, what is the cost of launching a site? It's just not the CMS, right? It's licensing of the CMS, but you have to think about designing the site, building it, the hardware, training, maintenance and support. So so quite often when you're selecting a CMS, you may just consider the licensing cost. Think about the total cost of ownership. You know, and some ACMS, which has higher licensing cost in one scenario, might have a lower 
total cost of ownership in another scenario. So think about the total cost of ownership of actually taking that CMS and implementing. Ask the vendor, what does it cost to implement the site? Give them an example. What is, is there a ratio between the license cost and the bill cost? Um, what is training like? Is it, if it's not very easy to use, perhaps you're spending a lot of money on training, which can get very expensive. Maintenance and support. Are the skills easily available for that particular CMS? You know, uh, if you're paying average twice as much per an hour, which, which is the case with some legacy CMSs, then your maintenance and support costs become cost prohibitive for you to do anything at the site that you launch. So think about total cost of ownership right, right at the beginning as you think about the right CMS that's a good for your business. <laughs> and, and when you're thinking about, obviously, the um, CMS, you have to also think about skills. Typically, how are you going to get access to skills for that particular CMS to implement it? Do you implement it in-house? Do you go to, do you find a partner? Or do you go to even the, the product vendor to select the CMS? And, and very quickly, you'll start, to, you'll start to find an approach that works for you. If the skills are e easily available in the marketplace, perhaps with some guidance from the vendor, you can do it in-house. Or if the skill, if you really want a market leading site and you want a partner to really build a flexible cap capability in the CMS, you should probably go to a partner. So those are some considerations in, you know, when you think about the product that you that you feel would be a good fit for your business. I'll spend a few minutes now talking about what is the best practice approach to actually select the CMS. What, what approach can you apply to actually go from start to end, you know, from the beginning to the end, because it's not easy. It's, it's difficult to start the project, and if marketing is leading a project, marketing marketers are not AT people. So if they are really leading and shepherding the project, you need a process. And one of the processes that that works well for us um, is is something I'll walk through. But typically, when you're when you're starting a project such as this. You really need to set up a team that will win, and and it's a pretty you know vague statement, but it's it's so true. I see it all the time where where you do not have adequate stakeholders. You just have a couple of people in marketing and maybe an IT person, you know, um, going down the path of selecting the technology, or it's just IT leading the project and and marketing is involved as and when needed. We believe that. Marketing should be, this is a marketing project, it's not why it's technology selection. Marketing should be leading the selection process because they will ultimately be using, using the uh, capability. So it's important to have a broad set of stakeholders, drive participation, ensure that you, know, you do great project management. And, and if you need consultants who can bring value, who've got great experience, understand your business, then bring them in to actually help you select the technology because it's not easy. There's just so many out there, and if you're doing, you know, an average marketer, they may see, you know, in, in a period of ten years, maybe two to three redesigns. Um, you know, it's not often that an organization goes through a CMS selection process. It's you know, once in three, five, seven years. So, if you haven't been through it before, you know, and if you're struggling with it, well, you know, it's uh, it is complex. So, so get get help. But, but certainly make marketing a, a driver for the project because they ultimately know what they need and IT should certainly participate, but marketing should be leading the initiative. So pick a process that will work. There's plenty of processes out there. I'll show you, I'll walk through the ones that we follow and I'd be happy to send this information across to you if you can use it in, you know, within your organization. By all means, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to share. We have a four-step process. Starts with discovery, ends with selection. It goes from discovery to analysis to really investigation and selection. And and we start off by really understanding the business, understanding the objectives, so what what you're trying to accomplish, before we even get into requirements. Because a lot of the things that I talked about up front in terms of the capabilities of the CMS and so on, it it drives towards really understanding. You know, what does the business want to do? Um, once we understand that, we go down the path of actually collecting requirements. And then against those requirements, you can quickly narrow the vendors out there um, who align with those requirements. Then you can go through a selection process. Um, and, and 
typically each stage is iterative. So as you go from discover to analyze, you, you want to continuously confirm what you did in the previous phase. And discovery would, would involve really understanding you know, business needs, conducting stakeholder sessions, meeting with IT, defining objectives of the project, and really starting to establish user stories. What is it that is ultimately the users would want or the audience would want from, from the website? And this can be done at a high level. Establish personas, establish you know, stakeholder personas who will use the CMS. And then you can start to go down the path that you're getting into requirements. Um, there are use, user stories and use cases that you can define in terms of how users would use the system. And that can help you understand better as to how you would actually select the CMS. So, so just conducting discovery and analysis before you get into really looking at vendors is very helpful because if you go directly into this vendor selection process, what we find is you start to get into sort of this feature war. You know, this vendor has this feature and that vendor has that and they all look good and you want them all, but you get confused. And I've seen organizations spend two years not being able to select an appropriate technology because they're not aligned on the vision and then is, you know, the stakeholder descends and it's just you know, CMS to look alike, and they're just not able to make a make a, make a decision. So, so get to investigation, but but lay the groundwork of discovery and analysis, and then start to look at various vendors. Identify your must meet criteria. I apologize. I've been <laughs> I was on the call and was not able to uh, uh, press the wrong button and my phone died. So I apologize for that. Um, can the presenter hear me? We can hear you, Raul. Okay, great, great. I apologize. You know when you get these nice phone systems, sometimes they're too complicated. So. Um, I am back, and hopefully you could hear me where I left off. Um, <clears throat> in terms of, we were talking about investigation and, and going down the path of actually looking at, at, at um, vendors and what they offer. And we talked about must meet criteria. So, so having criteria, which allows you to select the vendors and which allow you to organize and, and really start to figure out which vendors would meet those capabilities allow you to get down to a selected list very quickly. So really have that must meet criteria and ensure that it's a limited set of criteria um, that allow you to get to specific um, vendors. Also, start to really think about proof of concept and really think about how these vendors need to meet some key criteria that will ensure that they're a fit. So when someone comes and demos a product to you, they're showing you the best things these products offer, right? It's, it's the best features and it looks really amazing. It's just when you open the hood, you know, a story might be a little different and some of you may have experienced this. So do proof of concept. Give them, you know, critical use cases or user stories that are important to you and your business and get them to actually do a proof of concept during this phase. And as you start to define those those user stories, and you think about, you know, you can do potentially an RFP. You can just do an RFI. It doesn't, you know, either are fine. But when you get to the list of vendors who are a fit, you try to get to a list of two or three, and use your proof of concept stories to actually get them to prove to you that this system would work. Get them to set up a proof of concept. Allow your users to, you know, spend whether it's a few days to a week to even a month using the system. Um, you will find that you will automatically know the vendor that's a good fit. And once you do that, you will see, reach a point that you would ultimately 
select the appropriate vendor. So that's a four-step process from discovery to analysis to investigating the vendors and really going down the path of specific selection of the vendors. Um, and then as you think about your selection process, we find that up front, you should be able to get to five to eight vendors fairly quickly. And towards the end, you really need to be down to two or three. If it's more than that, you just it just sucks up the bandwidth of the organization doing the selection. It takes a lot of time to do the demos, call the vendors and POC. So you need to really be down to two or three vendors towards the end and, and really selecting between them. Um, that's just generally what we find. Even when you're doing the proof of concept, it should just be down to perhaps two vendors. Um, this is just an example of um, a, a, a Fortune 500 consumer electronics company that we worked with. We helped them select CMS and project duration. It was fairly 12 weeks was passed, believe it or not, for a project such as this. Um, there were several stakeholders, several departments, and over several countries that were participating in this project. And we went through this process, or process of first educating the organization and eliciting needs. We understood their needs and we showed them best practices of what's going on. So even in your case, really look at best practices around what's happening in content management space. What are some of the trends? And then we started to, once we educated the group, we found that they were better informed to give us requirements. We had individual stakeholder sessions. So in your case, if you're selecting a, 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 a CMS yourself, have one-on-one -on -one interviews and, and really understand what stakeholders, and, you know, whether it's all the way down to the CMO or the CIO. What does, you know, CMS is a pretty important investment. So what, what are some of their needs for the organization? Um, and as we went down the process, we started to establish must-have criteria. So we walked in with several hundred requirements of our own. We laid that with clients' requirements. Then we started to look at various characteristics of CMSs. We looked at what Gartner had to say, Forrester had to say, and we highly recommend that you folks do the same. You know, they do a lot of due diligence around products, uh, but from a certain perspective, they would quite often not really get into the depth of how well the product performs in certain situations. So use that as a guide, but don't follow it to the point that you're saying, well, there's, you know, Gartner has something, the top quadrant, four vendor, they're probably a better fit than everyone else. It's, it's usually not the case. Uh, multilingual support, so you know, uh, in this case we had to offer support to stakeholders, we wanted an open architecture, and ultimately in this case we decided to do an RFI. So believe it or not, RFPs are not necessary, you know, something as simple as an RFI, the organi you know, your um, vendors can quickly respond, can get you to a point fairly quickly of, you know, those three to four vendors that, you know, you want. And we called the vendors in, they did demos. We understood the subtleties, we set up a proof of concept, we got the business to actually use the tool, and ultimately we, you know, business themselves were able to select the product. They knew after they used the product for a week in their, with their use cases, the product they wanted. So this is just an example that you can apply in your situation as well. Um, you know, in terms of timelines you need to set, you know, for a large company you're able to do it in 12 weeks. You know, sometimes it takes four months depending on how quickly the organization can move um, around such an in initiative. So in conclusion, um, what I'd say is focus on value and not features. Focus on the roadmap. Focus on how that would fit with your strategy rather than features. Most what you'll find is large CMSs or the, uh, the market leading CMSs, most of them would offer, you know, within certain variants the features others offer. It's just that is the other stuff typically that matters. Um, so also quite often you might not just be looking at the CMS product, you might be selecting an ecosystem. So in that case you have to really think about how the CMS fits with an analytics tool, with search and so on. What does that combination look like? Um, I highly recommend the marketing lead the initiative or the business, you know, typically it's marketing if it's a CMS. Um, this is not just an IT project. So if IT is leading the project, marketing is barely involved, um, you know, might, you might find that you end up with a product which is architected really well but not really easy to use and does not meet business needs. Um, and in short, you have a solid process, a process that allows you to drive success, a process that allows you to move through the journey uh, in a manner that you're 
all the way from, you know, you're trying to link the organization objectives down to the product. So having a tight process that you can really follow through and it's project managed really well is really important. So these are some of the takeaways that I would give to you um, in context of the conversation. So, you know, we, we looked at various trends in the marketplace, we looked at certain considerations in selecting a CMS and also a process. There's just literally a thousand CMSs, so I can never get on a call and say pick one over the other. Um, but the variety of considerations come into play when you're selecting a CMS. So it's very difficult to name products and 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 recommend them um, unless a particular situation is actually considered. So with that, um, I'll ask the um, organizer to field questions. Um, yes, we do have a lot of questions coming in. Um, the first question is, which is the best CMS platform for personalization? Uh, the best CMS platform. I'm, I'm always, uh, the word best is, you know, best for a particular situation. So the situation is yours. Uh, but there are a few uh, CMS platforms out there which offer personalization. For example, Site4 allows you to personalize right out of the product. Um, the other products like Ektron, um, SD Altridian, they have great uh, personalization capabilities built in the product. So uh, certainly personalization is becoming a pretty important uh, capability in CMSs. Uh, next question. All right, um, I can see that there's other questions. So another one is, do all CMS products support multilingual websites? Well, I wouldn't say all, some do it better. So SD Altridian, for example, does an amazing job at global websites and it plugs into uh, content houses who can do translation for you. But most contemporary CMSs are doing a better job in multilingual capabilities. Uh, next question. Uh, the next question is, how much should the CMS selection project cost? What are the time constraints? Well, you know, if you're doing it internally, it's just you and your time. <laughs> I'm sure you can measure that. But we find that selecting such a initiative, depending on how complex you need it to be, it could be a simple, you know, few workshops if you already are down to a few CMS that you want and you know you need a vendor to come in and help you do a selection or it could be pretty or you know comprehensive. So it's just really it's all the way from five thousand to you know hundred and fifty thousand dollars depending on you know variety of things that you'd want to do during the selection process. Do you do want to do an RFP? Do you want to do an RFI? Do you just want to do demos and select? It it, it depends on, you know, uh, the uh, exhaustiveness of the effort. Uh, I'll just take one more question for today and we'll get to all the other questions after the webinar via email. Uh, the last question for today is, is there an automated solution for migrating existing content into the new CMS? That's a great question. Actually, in automation of, of content, content migration, it, there's a variety of factors that you have to consider. First of all, um, so, so the answer is yes. There are automated tools available that allow you to pick content from the source system to the target system. However, that is only a consideration in actually, you know, thinking about how you would migrate your content because the way the content is structured in the source system will determine how you're able to migrate it, whether it's manual or automated. And it might be a combination of the two. So you might be able to migrate 80% of the content automatically 20% you might have to manually do it just because it's not structured well. Or you could write scripts that can 
even the content is not structured well, you can write intelligent scripts that can pull content and push it into the new system, but you'll still have to do a lot of manual work to bring it to a point where it's structured effectively. So it really depends on the structure of the source CMS, the one that you're uh, getting off of, how well it's structured. More so than tool. All right, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the oh, session. Thank you, everyone. Um, and uh, if you have any further questions, you can just drop an email, and I'd be happy to respond and get back to you. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye. The organizer has entered.